Yo guys, it's Sam. I hope all of you are doing great. This is iOS 12.1 at Beta 4 out for developers right now. Of course, make sure you guys hit subscribe so you don't miss out on more updates like this in the future. Hit like if you're excited for the update. But I've looked around and you would think for a 200, uh, nearly 50 megabyte update, there would be a ton of changes and that's actually not the story here. I haven't been able to find any changes or features, which is a little bit weird because you'd think there'd be a lot of changes at this point in the game. We're only on iOS 12.1 Beta 4, but still only the big features remain. You've got group FaceTime back, tons and tons of new emojis, actually over 70 new emojis now, which is pretty cool. I actually hate running the beta with the new emojis because none of my friends have the new ones and I want to use a bunch of the cool stuff, uh, but I can't because it'll just show up as question mark boxes if you send anybody outside of the iOS 12.1 beta, some of these new emojis, but they are here. So huge shout out to whoever made sure that the Frisbee emoji got put in this update. Super big fan of that. I do want to show you one other change that I believe it was initially discovered by 9to5Mac. It's really small, you have to listen really close. For these buttons right down here, I believe this is iPhone XS, XS Max, XR as well, and then also the regular iPhone 10. But there's now a really small clicking sound, so try to listen really closely. You can barely hear it. Uh, it's super, super quiet. It just sounds like the most subtle click you could possibly imagine, and it happens whenever you feel the haptic or haptic feedback as well. So it's a pretty cool change right there, but again, very small, and I definitely assume there would be more changes inside of iOS 12.1, but I've looked around, and honestly, I have not found anything huge. Clearly, group FaceTime is going to be the headlining feature. I'm so excited that we will be finally seeing that. And also, out of curiosity, I ran one of my first Geekbench tests ever on my regular iPhone at 10s and got some pretty good scores 4801 for the single core score and a 10,000. 878 for the multi-core score. So pretty average, or I would say expected performance for the A12 Bionic chip inside. Uh, and that is largely the story of iOS 12.1. As always, I wish I had more things to show you, wish I had more things to tell you about. Battery life and performance for me have been pretty good. I was reading that apparently in 12.1 and beta 2 and 3, there were some performance issues on devices like the iPhone at 10. I think those have been resolved based off some comments I've read on Reddit, but my experience on the iPhone at 10s has been pretty standard. It's been pretty good. My battery life has been fantastic. Performance has been fantastic. And overall, I think this is going to be yet another iOS 12 upgrade uh, that totally hits it out of the park. So if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe for more, drop a like if you enjoyed watching, and of course, for now I've been Sam, I hope you're doing great, and I'll talk to you in the next one.